everybody so we are in week four and I am on page 61 in the pink packet so these are the notes that we would have done in class together if by chance you happen to miss them so uh, we just have two quick examples to get through and then we'll be doing some practice and what I want to point out is on the second example I am going to change the problem so if you want to take a quick look pause the video write that down and then we're just going to get started with the top so, kind of thinking about this from beginning to end, what I need to do is first I just want to think about that general shape. So, based on this hot, odd exponent, I know that this is going to be a bumpy line. A bumpy line, normally, you know, it should go uphill, but the negative says it's going to go downhill, that negative 2. So, my overall shape, just as a quick thought, is going to look something like that. There will be more bumps to it, but that's the general shape, all right? Um, the other thing I can think about right away is my y-intercept. And a y-intercept, again, is just when your x is 0. So if I put 0 in for wherever there's an x, the great thing about 0 is when you multiply by 0 or 0 is to a power is that you always get 0. So this term would turn into 0, so would this one and this one. So I would just have 0 plus 0 plus 0 take away 12. I already know for a fact that my y-intercept is going to be negative 12. So the things I want to think about are the shape, the y-intercept, and then the other thing I'm going to think about are my x-intercepts. And then just when I'm done, what if the directions just had said go from standard form to factored form? So the other thing I'm going to add to that are the factors. All right, so we're going to start with, you know, technically I should try to factor this. So first, I would look, is there a GCF? And yes, there is. So if I want, I can take out, for instance, a 2. I could take out a negative 2. It really doesn't matter. Um, but let's go ahead and just get used to this idea of always trying to factor first. So I'm going to go ahead and just take that negative 2 out. And when I'm done, I have x cubed. I have minus 2x squared. I have minus 5x and I have plus 6. You could also have just taken out a 2, but usually when we do factor, we always want the leading term to be positive. So I have a GCF. It just made it the numbers a little bit more manageable. And then what would happen is with four terms, I should try to group them. So I'm just going to switch to a pencil here, covering up this negative 2, and I would group the first two and the last two. And then I would look for a GCF here, which is an x squared. And then I'm left with x minus 2, which remember, when we factor, these always have to match. So I would ask myself, what would I factor out of this to get to here? And that would be a negative 5. So negative 5 times x gives me this, but negative 5 with the minus 2 will not give me 6. So as it turns out, this isn't factorable. All right? So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly erase this because it's not factorable. And that means I should try the rational root theorem. What's your backup when you can't factor? And so from there, what I should do is take the factors of the last number. This is, again, just looking at this problem from beginning to end. So the factors of 6, I want to look at a positive, a negative 1, 2, 3, and 6. And then I would take the factors of the number in the beginning, which is now technically a 1. And so the factors of 1 are just 1. And I would take all of these numbers and this would be and make a fraction and this number would be my numerator and this would be my denominator and then the list of possible zeros that would work would be 1 over 1 which is 1 2 over 1 which is 2 3 over 1 6 over 1 and I would just realize that there's a positive and negative of all of these and so what I want to do now is come over here and just try one of these numbers. Will 1 work? Will negative 1 work? Will 2 work? Will negative 2 work? So usually one that would work would be 1, negative 1, 2, or negative 2. Those are the ones that you want to start with. Um, I know in our notes we saw a lot of 2s and negative 2s, so if you want to try that, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you one that does work, and one that does work is 1. And then what I'm going to do, now remember, I'm not working with this problem. I'm working with this problem now because I took a GCF out. And I'm going to take these numbers, 1, negative 2, negative 5, and 6. I got my countdown, 3, 2, 1, to no x at all. 
Now, what if you hadn't have factored out that GCF of the negative 2? That still would have worked, but you just have bigger numbers to work with later, and so I would try always try to avoid that. So you start again by always bringing the 1 down, and then you this is the multiplying number. 1 and 1 is 1. Add these up. Negative 1 and 1 is negative 1. Add these up. Negative 6 and 1 is negative 6. Add these up. And now I have 0. And again, this tells me that it works. This tells me that 1 is a 0. So when I wrote x-intercept, I'm actually going to add the word 0 in front of it, and I know that one of my answers is 1. Okay? So um, from there, remember this doesn't have anything. This is the constant. This gets an x, and this gets an x squared. And what I want to do is take this now and factor it. So we're going from something that's not factorable to something that is factorable. Every now and then, this wouldn't be factorable as well, and I would have to do this process again, but we're not doing that. So anyway, I would look for factors of negative 6 that get me to negative 1, and those factors would be a negative 3x and a 2x, and then I start to make my factors or my neighbors, and the neighbor that meets the neighbor to make x squared is just x and x. And then I like to draw the loops because I'm going to go for these numbers. So can I take x times something to get to here? And I can. That's a minus 3. So that takes care of the left one. And then can I take x times something to get that? And I can. That's a 2. And now I've got my factors. And so I can set them equal to 0, and I would solve. So when I would set this one equal to 0, I just get negative 2. And when I set this one equal to 0, I get 3. So now I can add to my x-intercepts. I can add to my zeros. I can add... And I wish I hadn't have written this here. So in addition with 1, I can add the negative 2 and a 3. And remember, I was supposed to have three answers according to that. And I do. Here's 1, here's 2, here's 3. So um, if the directions had just said, you know, put it into factor form, well then the factor that got me the 3, you know, was this x minus 3. The one that got me the negative 2 was the x plus 2. So I could start to add those in. But then, what would have been the factor that got me to 1? And you just want to do x minus 1. So again, I've done a couple things here. Not only did I find the x-intercepts or the zeros, I also got it into factored form. And now, since all of these answers just show up one time, that means they're all going to cross. So remember, we have the bounce. If your answer shows up, an even amount of times, like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. It bounce, wiggle, if it wiggles, if it shows up an odd amount of time. So not 1, but 3, 5, 7. And it's going to cross when it shows up once. Because a wiggle and a cross are still going through the x-axis, but a cross just goes straight through, and a wiggle kind of does this like curve to it. So I'm going to go over here and start to mark these points. So let's start with our negative 12, our y-intercept. And then I've got 1, and I've got negative 2, and I've got 3. And if you want the reminder that they're all going to cross, you know, just put like a little C there. And then I also want to think about that shape, that it's going to look something like this. So what I do is I go to the far left point, and I get its end behavior. And on the left, it's going up. It rises on the left. And then on the right side, it's going down. It's falling on the right side. That's the some capstone terminology. And then what I do is I just, again, work my way left to right and connect dot to dot to dot. I go left to right. And remember, the only time it can ever cross an axis is if I've made a point on it. So it's going to cross through here. At some point, I'm going to have it turn to get to here. Crosses, and then I need to have it turn somewhere. I don't care where you make it turn, and then it can go down. So something like this. So where it turns, again, is not a focus of Algebra 2. That would be a focus later. So we're just going to leave it like that. All right, again, on this one, we did change the problem. And so just, again, kind of thinking from the very beginning, what would the shape look like? Uh, an even power would make this a U, so some type of bumpy U. It's just going to stay a U because there's nothing to flip it. All right? As far as an y-intercept goes, 
Again, that y-intercept would be when x is 0, and if you put 0 in for these terms, everything turns into 0. So my y-intercept is just 0, 0. And now what I would do is start to come up with a list of numbers. Now, the problem with this one, and this is our challenge problem, is that I should take the constant at the end, which if I were going to put one there, I would just be adding 0, because adding 0 doesn't change this equation. And then I would put it over the factors of the front number, which is 1. But when I take the factors of 0, I just get 0. And when I take the factors of 1, I just get 1. And then when I make my fractions, it'd be 0 over 1, which is 0. And unfortunately, 0 isn't going to really get us very far in this. So what I would want to do is put this in my graphing calculator and just find one point that would work. So um, let me double check that this is the right one. So I've already done that. You can see what it looks like. And this is great to see. Uh, the table is also great to see. So this is somewhere in between, what is it in between? One, two, three, four, and five. This looks like negative two. That looks like zero. And then that looks like, you know, that. So, you know, the one that they said might work again is zero, according to this list. But zero in here, then I'm just getting, you know, a bunch of zeros. Well, look. Let's see what happens. Let, let's put 0 in there because 0 is one that would have worked for, according to this list of numbers. Okay, so I take it back. It, it should work. So 0 is the only number I'm going to be able to test. I do know from my calculator that it's going to work. And I'm going to take these numbers 1, 6, 6, negative 4, and 0. Okay, so, oh, okay, I take it back. We're not going to do zero because that is not going to work. It's just actually, it's early in the morning. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to take, it's not going to work because I'm actually just going to start with what I already started with. So what I want to do instead is pick another number. So looking at that list, I'm going to choose negative two because I, I could see from my graph that negative two is going to work. And if you couldn't tell there, you can tell in your table that negative 2 is going to work. All right? So let's start. Again, this is a challenge problem overall. So bring down the 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. I'm going to add these up. Multiply again. Add these up. Multiply again. Add these up. Multiply again. Add these up. So remember, this says it's a 0. So when I'm starting to make my list of zeros, I'm going to put it over here, and I also want to do a list of factors. 